Glory be to Jesus. You know, sometimes you meet people in life whose callings in life are obvious. They do not need an introduction. And the person who is going to speak with us this morning is one such individual. He loves the Lord. No doubt about it. He's sold out for Jesus. No doubt about it. And he's a power machine for the Lord. And together, help me welcome Apostle Pastor Collins McLegale. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Amen. Let's just lift our hands to God. We are in seasons, unpredictable season. Amen. Where God can shift the atmosphere in any moment. So let's lift our hands in expectation and ask God to give us understanding even as we hear his word. Amen. Open your mouth. Ask the Lord, give me understanding of your word. Understanding of your word. I can't hear you pray. You can do better than that. The Bible says when he was teaching them to pray, he said, when you pray, say, prayer is loud. Open your mouth. Pray, pray to the Father. Give me understanding. Father, we pray for understanding. Lord, open our minds to hear what you're saying in this season. Open our minds. Open our minds. Remove every cloud of darkness. Give us understanding of your word. May the entrance of your word bring light in the name of Jesus. Lord, give us understanding. Give us understanding. Prepare the soil of our hearts, O oh God. May our hearts be fertile. May our hearts be receptive to your word. May your word sink deep in the inner recesses of our hearts. May your word produce a hundredfold. Father, breathe upon your word today. Breathe upon your word today, confirming it with signs and wonders for the glory and honor of your name. Father, we give you the praise. We give you the glory. Right now, exalt the name of Jesus wherever you are. Jesus is the King of kings. He is the Lord of lords. We are gathered because of Jesus. He is the reason why we are gathered. Lift your hands, open your mouth, exalt his name wherever you are. His name is above all names. His name is above principalities. His name is above powers. His name is above rulers of the dark world. His name is above witchcraft. Come on, open your mouth. Exalt his name. 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 I can't hear you. I can't hear you, church. Exalt his name. Exalt his name. We are talking about Jesus, the one who died for you and me, the one who gave it all for you and me. His name is highly lifted up. Let the earth praise him. Let the earth adore him. Open your mouth. Praise the Lord. Exalt his name. His name is powerful. His name is majestic. His name is great. He is great and greatly to be praised. Exalt his name. Exalt his name. Exalt his name. Exalt his name. Jesus, you are exalted. You are exalted. You are exalted. You are exalted. Be thou exalted in this service today. Be exalted, O oh God. Be exalted. Be exalted. 
be exalted above principalities in Kawempe. Jesus, be exalted above powers in Kawempe, above witchcraft, above sorcery. Be exalted, O oh God, above strong men in Kawempe, above religion, above Islam. Be exalted, be exalted, be exalted, be exalted, be exalted, be exalted, be exalted. Jesus, take your place, take your place, take your place. We give you the praise, 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 we exalt your name, we exalt your name, we exalt your name, we exalt your name, we exalt your name. Come on, somebody clap your hands up. Clap your hands, clap your hands, make a joyful noise unto the Lord, shout unto the Lord, shout unto the Lord. The Bible says the shout of the king is amongst us. Shout unto the Lord with a voice of triumph. Shout unto the Lord with a voice of triumph. Father, we give you praise. We exalt your name. Be thou exalted up. In Jesus' name we pray. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. You may take your seats. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. First of all, I would like to thank my pastors in the house. Amen. Pastor Robert and Mama, thank you for this opportunity. Pastor Paul and Mama Susie, thank you for this opportunity. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I think you can honor them with a better hand clap. <laughs> Pastor Seth, double double, we honor you also. Honor you also. Praise, the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 And Mama, Pastor Wanaswa. Hallelujah. Let's honor them. The Bible says, give honor to whom honor is due. We thank you all, pastors. We have uh, new pastors in the house, powerful couple, Pastor Kadoa and Mama Kadoa. We honor you in the house. Pastor Sam and Mama Joy, we honor you in the house. You guys are a blessing to us. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. And finally, that man, I have never met that man, but he who said, save the best for last, did not do a mistake. Let us honor this beautiful girl. She's there, seated. Clap for her, sweetheart, Rhoda, Babiria, Makligeo. We honor you. Amen. Praise the Lord. She's blushing. Amen. Hallelujah. One thing she told me is that when she heard my voice, so my voice won me a prize. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I love you so much. May the Lord bless you. Amen. Hallelujah. You know, it's so, this, this season that we are in, it's so, it's so tricky to be given the microphone to deliver the word of God. Uh, Pastor Raymond, our youth pastor, asked me to preach the word. First of all, I went quiet. And he asked me, hey, you are not talking. So I, I, really, I really wanted to avoid to talk because we are in seasons where you don't just talk anything. You have to hear from God. Praise the Lord. You have to hear from God. And I can assure you the message you are going to hear is straight from the courts of heaven. Praise the Lord. So I want your hearts to be receptive. I'm going to be preaching as I prophesy. Hallelujah. So you need to catch the word. Because the word is not taught, it is caught. So whenever a prophecy is concerning you, you need to catch the word. Praise the Lord. Because if you don't catch it, you will miss it. Hallelujah. So today we are talking about supernatural Speed. Everybody says supernatural speed. 
Amen. One of the things God is doing in this new season, God is going to release supernatural speed. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So what is supernatural speed? What is supernatural speed? Before we get into that, you have to realize that the times we are living in, we are living in the tail end of the church age, meaning rapture is about to happen. Praise the Lord. We are living in the last pages of the end times. This is not the start of the end times. We are living in the last phase of the end times. Praise the Lord. Because when the day of Pentecost came and the Holy Ghost came upon the disciples or the apostles and they were drunk in the spirit, they said, you guys look drunk. But Peter stood boldly and said, "Ah, uh-uh, this was what you're seeing. We are not drunk. But this was what was prophesied by prophet Joel that in the last days I shall pour out my spirit. So those were the beginning of the last days. Amen. And where we are right now, we are at the end of the last days. Are you understanding? We are at the last phase of the last days. My brother, my sister, we have no time. Praise the Lord. You need to prepare your hearts. Jesus is coming very soon and is coming for a pure church. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. And because we are in the last phase of the last days, there are some certain things which have to be aligned by the word of God, which he ordained before time. Praise the Lord. Some things which have to be aligned by the word of God, which he ordained. Things which God purpose to happen before he takes the church. They have to happen because God does not lie. Whatever he purposes to do, that he is going to fulfill. So supernatural speed. What is supernatural speed? This is God's speed. That's why it is supernatural. Anything supernatural is not natural. There is divinity attached to it. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So this is God's speed. This is speed that is not natural. It is an explainable speed. You cannot explain this kind of speed. It is speed beyond human capability. Praise the Lord. Right now, the fastest man in the world, that is Usain Bolt, he broke the world record of 100 meters. I think he ran 9.56. Supernatural speed is speed beyond that. It cannot be explained. Hallelujah. By human mind. So that is what we are talking about. It is, it is beyond understanding. You cannot understand. And God is saying in this season that we have entered, he is releasing supernatural speed to you and me in the name of Jesus. Praise the Lord. You can give me a better amen than that. God is releasing supernatural speed to you and me. Number two, supernatural speed is speed happening at the frequency of heaven. This is speed happening at the frequency of heaven. It is not happening at the frequency of earth, but this is speed happening at the frequency of heaven. Why? Because things have to be done according to heaven's calendar. It is supernatural speed happening at the frequency of heaven because things have to be executed according to the calendar of heaven. God has a calendar in heaven concerning earth. And for things to be aligned according to his calendar, they have to happen in time. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So the reason God is releasing supernatural speed is because the church at one point lagged behind. 
So we are not synchronized with his agenda in the heaven. So God has to really speed for us to catch up. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. We have reached and entered into a season where that which God wrote in his books have to come to pass. They can no longer delay. Praise the Lord. They can no longer delay. Now is the acceptable time. Now is the acceptable time. There is no more delay. Things will happen fast at a supernatural speed because there has to be a synchronization with what heaven is doing. Jesus said, whatever I see my father do, that is what I do. Whenever Jesus or wherever he went, he went according to the timeline in heaven. He was never late. He was always a pinpoint. There is nothing he did outside the timeline of heaven. That was the speed Jesus moved in. And in three and a half years, he had finished the work. But we take long because we don't know what is happening there. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. First Kings chapter 18 verse 46. First Kings chapter 18 verse 46. The Bible says. First Kings chapter 18 verse 46. And the hand of the Lord, everybody say the hand of the Lord, was on Elijah and he guarded up his loins and he ran before Ahab to the entrance of Jezreel. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. The hand of the Lord came upon Elijah and he guarded up his loins and ran before Ahab to the entrance of of Jezreel. Now at this point Elijah had told Ahab that there is a rain which is about to come. There was a famine for about three and three years and Elijah was in prayer and when he looked at the clouds he told tell Ahab that there is a rain which is about to come. Let him go with his chariots and Ahab took off with his chariots. After Ahab took off. Elijah followed him, but he never had chariots. The Bible says the hand of the Lord came upon Elijah, and Elijah being old, he guarded up his loins, and he overtook Ahab and his chariots. That is supernatural speed. The hand of the Lord is the hand of supernatural speed. When the hand of the Lord comes upon you, you take off supernaturally. It cannot be explained how Elijah overtook the chariots of Ahab. Mind you, these are the chariots of the king. They are not normal chariots. These are special horses driven by charioters or riders who are qualified. So Ahab was taken off. And he was heading to the entrance of Jezreel. But when the hand of the Lord came upon Elijah, Ahab saw Elijah, despite his age, he saw Elijah run at a speed which could not be fathomed. Bible scholars say that distance Elijah ran was 21 miles, 32 kilometers. 32 kilometers. It was more than a marathon. It was not 100 meters. But Elijah ran at a supersonic speed. On Friday, I was watching the latest G Wagon Mercedes. It takes off. I love cars. It takes off in, in they, were, they were saying, in 0 0.4 seconds. Is it 0 0.4? But it's take off is a hundred kilometers per hour. It starts like this. It has already taken off. That is a G-Wagon latest. 
It's not a camel, it is a car. For you who does not know what a G-Wagon is. Praise the Lord. Now imagine a G-Wagon has taken off. And then you see an old man overtaking it as though it is nothing. That is what happened in those days. Praise the Lord. And guess what? Elijah was running to the entrance of Jezreel. The Bible says he overtook Ahab to the entrance of Jezreel. Praise the Lord. I prophesy in the name of Jesus. God is going to release speed upon the church. You are going to enter gates open for the church before any man can enter. Praise the Lord. There are gates. Listen, there are gates in the spiritual realm that God is opening in this season. Whoever reaches first possesses the gates. Praise the Lord. There are gates which God opens, but because the church delays, the enemy possesses. So on this matter, Elijah was anointed. The hand of God was on him. He took off and reached the entrance of Jezreel before Ahab. That was prophetic. He reached the entrance of Jezreel before Ahab and his chariots. Some of you are going to reach gates before the enemy reaches there. When the enemy comes, he's going to find you. There are doors which are going to open in this season. It needs you to take off to reach the entrance of the gates. Because whoever reaches first possesses the gates. In the name of Jesus, it is not a season to slow down. It is not a season to delay. Gates are being opened in the spiritual realm. Gates of media, gates of politics, gates of government, gates of sports. They are opening up for the church. Whoever reaches there faster is going to possess them. And the Lord says his hand is going to come upon you. You are going to take off. They have finances, but by the hand of God, you will reach before them. They have all the weapons. By the hand of God, you will reach before them. You will possess the gates. When they come, they will find you representing the kingdom of God. They will find you on the gates. They will find you determining what enters the gates and what comes out of the gates. If you're there, say hallelujah. Remember, this was a time when the rain had started coming. It was a season when Elijah, through his prayers, opened up the heavens and it was raining. Rain symbolizes the move of God. Hallelujah. When the move of God has started, you need to move with speed because there are things God does in the spiritual realm. You cannot delay. You need to gather up your strength. You need to strengthen your feeble legs. You need to run in the spirit. You need to possess gates in the spirit by the speed of the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Isaiah chapter 40. Thank you. Isaiah chapter 40 verse 28. Let's read there. Isaiah chapter 40 verse 28. Isaiah chapter 40 verse 28. The Bible says has thou not known, Isaiah 40 verse 28, has thou not heard that the everlasting God, the Lord, the creator of the ends of the earth, fainteth not, neither is he weary. Hallelujah, that is our God. He does not get tired. He does not get weary. Hallelujah. There is no searching of his understanding. Verse 29. He giveth power to the fainter. He giveth power to the fainter. And to them that have no might, he increases strength. Even the youth shall faint and be weary. And the young men shall utterly fall. Verse 31. But they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary. That is divine speed. They shall run and not be weary. We are going to run in this season. We are going to run at a speed that cannot be fathomed.
kingdom. You are not going to get tired. You will serve the Lord with vigor and with power. You are going to serve the Lord in the morning, in the noon time, at night. The power of God shall be upon you. You will run and not get weary. You will run and not get weary because the Lord who is giving you speed does not get weary. He does not faint. He does not get tired. The things which needs to be accomplished needs to be accomplished by those who will not get tired, who will not get weary, who will be ready to run the race, who will be ready to execute God's agenda in power and in consistency in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. But they that wait, everybody say wait. We are in a season of waiting. We are in a season of waiting. It is not in vain that we are fasting. We are in a season of waiting. Very soon strength is coming. Strength is coming. Strength is coming. Even, even them that you had, they are weak. You are going to see them run, you will wonder. Even them you thought are feeble. Them you thought they cannot pray. They cannot study the word. They look like weak Christians. Strength is coming upon them. You are going to see commitment like never before. Hunger and passion like never before. Strength is coming. They that wait. They that wait. They that wait. Acts chapter 1 verse 4. They tarried. They waited. They waited. They waited. They waited. You get renewed when you wait. You get renewed when you wait. They waited on the day of Pentecost and the Holy Ghost came upon them. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Number two, 2 Kings chapter 9 verse 20. We are talking about supernatural speed. 2 Kings chapter 9 verse 20. 2 Kings chapter 9 verse 20. The Bible says, And the watchman told, saying, He came even unto them, and cometh not again. And the driving is like the driving of Jehu, the son of Nimshi. For he driveth furiously. Praise the Lord. He driveth furiously. Other version says, he driveth crazily. This was Jehu. He was riding a horse and the Bible calls it furiously. In fact, the movie The Fast and Furious, they got it from here. He driveth furiously. Furiously. He driveth at a speed. When Jehu was coming, he was not coming for negotiations. Jehu had the finishing anointing. Praise the Lord. And anybody in this season who has the finishing anointing, he's coming to finish, not to have mercy. He says he driveth furiously. Remember, when Elijah annihilated the prophets of Baal, when Jezebel heard about it, and Jezebel was furious. Elijah took off. He ran. He was in fear. But the same Elijah was told to anoint three people. One of them being Jehu. Hallelujah. Jehu never ran from Jezebel. Jehu ran at, Be at Jezebel. Jehu charged at Bezebel. We are in seasons where God is anointing kings with a finishing anointing. They are going to annihilate principalities which have reigned over Uganda. They are going to annihilate strong men which have reigned over Uganda. They shall not have mercy. They are going to be bold. In their eyes it will be finishing. They will be anointed to finish. When Jehu had that Jezebel was when they anointed anointing landed on him. He drove furious. He did not drive there to give words. He did not drive there for negotiations. He drove there to finish her. Praise the Lord. And when he reached there, he said, is there anybody for me? Is there anyone for me? And the eunuchs who are with Jezebel in the upper room or in the balcony, they got Jezebel and they threw her down. Praise the Lord. 
and the dogs licked her. That which was troubling Israel was annihilated when the, when the Lord anointed Jehu. Speed to kill. Speed to kill. Before God releases the new move, or as he has released a new move, he's also dealing with things in the spiritual realm of Uganda. Last Sunday you heard that there was a snake which was cut seven times. What does that symbolize? When the move is coming, judgment is coming. God is raising people, non-negotiators, who are going to finish the devil, who are going to finish witchcraft, who are going to finish sorcerers, who are going to finish stargazers, those who have come against the cause of God over Uganda. Their time is over. God is anointing kings with the anointing of Jehu. They are going to drive furiously. They are going to charge in enemy territory. They are going to cut the head of the enemy in the name of Jesus. It is called speed to kill. Praise the Lord. Listen to this. I read in 1 Samuel. 1 Samuel chapter that is 1 Samuel chapter, let me see it here. 1 Samuel chapter 17 verse 48. The Bible says concerning David that he hasted and ran toward the Philistine or the giant. David, when he saw the Philistine coming, David ran towards the giant. He did not move behind he did not say blood of Jesus moving behind her. When he saw the giant coming, David charged at the giant. David ran at the giant. When you have the speed of the Holy Ghost, when you have the speed to kill, you don't go timid. You run at the enemy. You run at the giant. You run at principalities. You run at powers. You cut their head off. You cut their authority off that Jesus alone may reign. Jesus alone may be exalted. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. He charged at Goliath. He ran. He hastened. Other version says he ran speedily. It was time to finish. Not time to negotiate. Time to finish. These are giants. These are principalities. And this anointing, sorry to say, is not coming to all of us. Yeah, it's coming to people who have been given kingly anointing or apostolic anointing. You shall see them rise. But these ones will be furious ones. They will have speed to kill. They will not waste time. They will not pray, oh God, have mercy on them. No, principalities have to die. People manning gates have to die. Giants in the city have to come down. They have to be annihilated. Their heads have to be cut off. In the name of Jesus. Praise the Lord. It is called the finishing anointing. What Elijah ran from Jehu charged at. Not to say that Elijah was weak. Uh -uh. That is how you appreciate the supremacy of God. He uses everybody. Elijah did his part. But when Jehu came, he did what Elijah could not do. That's why you need me, I need you. We need each other. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Number three. What God is going to do. Genesis chapter 41 verse 14. We are talking about the speed. Supernatural speed. Genesis 41 verse 14. Then Pharaoh sent and called Joseph. And they brought him quickly. Everybody say quickly. They brought him quickly out of the dungeon. They will send for you quickly. Hallelujah. This is the season where you are going to be sent for quickly. No wastage of time. Why? Because you have solutions for the nation's problems. You have solutions for the nation's problems. Hallelujah. They will call you quickly in big offices. They will call you quickly to solve solutions, to solve problems. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. 
Hallelujah. For some of you, God has put solutions in your life. He has put solutions in you. The right time is coming. How do you know? How do you think we are going to take over the marketplace? You are not just going to take over by prayer. You are going to take over by solutions. You are going to take over by ideas, creativity, things which are disturbing the government. You will be a solution. You will be a Joseph. There is a time which will come. The government will need an urgent solution quickly. And in this season, God is selecting, selecting, selecting. You are going to see, you are going to see what is called change of God speedily. By the hand of God, change of God speedily. Joseph could not imagine. You know, I was standing and I was asking God, why? How can it happen without elections? Without what? They just choose Joseph speedily. Now remember what I told you. It is not a fact that Joseph, or it was, let's say, it was not that Joseph had to go through prison to be a prime minister. When you look at Joseph's life, he was already rising even in Potiphar's house. Except for the enemy, he tried to cut that short by bringing him temptation and he was accused and put in prison. So even that caused a delay in God's agenda. So when he finds himself in prison, and then God checks his calendar according to what he, talk, he, he spoke to Abraham in Genesis 12. He said, ah, we are almost behind schedule. Joseph needs to be a prime minister speedily. So God orchestrates a situation that will cause Joseph rising speedily. And we are in that season where God has determined the mountain of the house of the Lord to be above all mountains. And it is believers who are going to occupy all those seven spheres. And they will do it in this season speedily by the hand of God. Don't be shocked when you are promoted. For some of us, we have worked hard. We have been faithful at our places of work and promotion has not been coming. This is the season. You will be selected by the hand of God quickly. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. And you will thank God that it happened this time if you are connected to what God is doing in this season. Number four, Isaiah chapter 66, verse 8. I wish we had the Bible here. Isaiah chapter 66, verse 8. Let's go there. It's called supernatural speed. Isaiah chapter 66, verse 8. Listen, Isaiah chapter 66, verse 8. Who has had such a thing? Meaning it is tingling their minds. Everybody say tingling. <laughs> who has heard such a thing? Who has seen such things? Meaning it has never been seen. Praise the Lord. It has never been seen. Who has heard such things? Shall the earth be made to bring forth in one day? Meaning there's no way it happens in one day. But because it is the season of speedy reaction. Shall the earth be made forth in one day? Listen. Or shall a nation be born at once? Hallelujah. For as soon as Zion travailed, she brought forth her children. As soon as, other versions say, immediately Zion travailed, she brought forth her children. Praise the Lord. Uganda, a new Uganda is coming. God is birthing a new Uganda. God is birthing.
birthing a new Uganda shall a nation be brought forth at once. Yea, thus says the Lord, by his mighty hand, Uganda shall come forth. Nations will wonder, what is this nation that has arisen in these times? What are they doing? There is so much ingenuity. There is so much creativity. There is so much infrastructure all happening. Quickly, 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 immediately, things are going to be born. Lives are going to be changed. Industries are going to be built by the hand of God. Hallelujah. Then he says, as soon as Zion travailed, she brought forth her children. Zion is the church. Hallelujah. Zion is the church. Immediately Zion travailed. She brought forth her children. You are about to see born again believers. People running to church to get born again like never before in the name of Jesus. This time our travail will not be in vain. In this season, in this dimension, in this atmosphere, every travail that you have given for the lost is going to be fruitful. Immediately, Zion travailed. Immediately, Zion was in labor. She brought forth her children. You are going to see sons and daughters run into the house of God. You are going to see the lost run into the house of God. You are going to see children closer like you have never seen before in the name of Jesus in this season it is happening immediately people will get born again in their numbers as soon as Zion travailed she brought forth her children Isaiah 60 verse 22 this one is for us Kawempe Isaiah 60 verse 22 Are we, Are we there? A little one shall become what? A thousand and a small one, a strong nation. I, the Lord, will hasten. Everybody say hasten. I, the Lord, will hasten it in his time. This is the time that the Lord will hasten it. Praise the Lord. A little shall become a thousand and a small one, a great nation. I, the Lord, I, the Lord, not man, I, the Lord. He had to specify, I, it is me who will hasten it, who will make it come to pass quickly in his time. We are in seasons where God, by his spirit, is calling forth the lost, is bringing forth the lost, is pulling forth the lost. Hallelujah. In his time, he will hasten it. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. You need to get ready. Get ready. Get ready. All of you are ministers. You are going to minister. The lost will be in this place. They will be coming in their numbers. God is bringing them forth. We need to prepare good enough. Next week, revival week, we are talking about preparing for the harvest. Immediately, church growth. Speed of the Holy Ghost. Supernatural speed. In Acts chapter 1 verse 15, you see there were 120 disciples or in, the, in the upper room. Acts chapter 2 verse 41, there were 3,000 added in their numbers. This is supernatural growth. Acts 1 15, there were 120. Acts chapter 2 verse 41, there were 3,000 added. Acts chapter 2 verse 47, the Bible says their numbers were added daily. God added daily to their numbers. Acts 4 verse 4, they were 5,000. Praise the Lord. Acts chapter 5 verse 14. More and more believed. That is supernatural growth. Acts 5 verse 28. They said you have filled Jerusalem with your doctrine. Everywhere you'll be hearing Jesus reigns. Jesus reigns. Everywhere. Everywhere. The earth will be filled with the knowledge of God as the waters cover the sea. Acts chapter 6 verse 1. Number of disciples now was not adding. It was multiplying. They moved from the realm of addition to multiplication. By the speed of God. 
the church was growing at a supersonic speed. Praise the Lord. Acts chapter 6 verse 7. The Bible says now they could not count. They were just saying their numbers increased rapidly. And this is not only for Kawempe, it's for the church in Uganda. Amen. Acts 21 verse 20. It says tens of thousands of Jewish leaders also were followers. Even the Anglicans, the Catholics, the Muslims, all of them, the religious, religious, all of them were also followers. You shall see them getting born again. Sheikhs, you shall see them getting born again. Priests, you shall see them getting born again. Then in Acts, I think, chapter 17, the Bible says that these ones are the ones who have turned the whole world upside down. Because when you have numbers, you have might. You can determine what is happening. You can determine what to do because of numbers. They turn the world upside down. Meaning opposite. If it was evil, good. If it was the devil reigning, Jesus is reigning. Everywhere you go, in shops, Jesus. In the buses, Jesus. In the toilet, Jesus. Everywhere, Jesus. Praise the Lord. It is this season that you are in. The revival you have been praying for. These are things God is already working at. Speedily. The last one, then we close. Nehemiah chapter 6 verse 15 to 16. Nehemiah chapter 6 verse 15 to 16. The Bible says. Nehemiah chapter 6 verse 15 to 16. So Verse 15, so the wall was finished in the 25th day of Elul, of, of the month of Elul, in 52 days, when our enemies and the surrounding nations heard about it, they were frightened and humiliated. Why? They realized that this work had been done with the help of our God. I studied about that wall there is no way it could have been rebuilt in 52 days according to its magnitude. They did it in record 52 days until their enemies were humiliated and said, this is the hand of God. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. In this season, grace for building and rebuilding speedily is coming. Is coming. Praise the Lord. Pastor Paul, this week, you know, I'm learning to flow in the prophetic. I asked Pastor Solomon, how do you do it? So, one day in the office, I prophesied over a certain, I don't know, maybe it was word of knowledge, over a certain lady. And it was exact. I just tried with her. I said, God, I'm in the office. This is a young university student. If I say and it backfires, we will laugh. So let me just say what I'm seeing. So when I told her, she said, wow, it is like that. So I, I talked to Pastor Solomon. I told him how. So he said at times it comes through imaginations. You understand? So he says, you just need to trust the pictures you're seeing. And then at times you may miss, but you will learn. So this week, I was seeing your picture. What you want to build for God it's not going to take time. It's going to come up speedily in record time. Number one, the influence which is going to come upon what you're doing because it is necessary for this time in the nation. It will come speedily. The name of, 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 of what you're building is going to come and it's going to, it's going to have an anointing of influence. God is going to carry the name. You will not need to advertise much. So what you're building is going to, just like Nehemiah, the anointing that God released on Nehemiah, 52 days they rebuilt. In a short time, you're going to build. And even here in the church, we are going to build things in a short time. You will start business, and in a short time, they will pick up. Praise the Lord. How do you think that we are going to take over mountains of business? 
There is no more 10 years of waiting. There is no more 20 years of waiting. There is no more 30 years of waiting. The acceptable time is now. You are going to build and by the grace of God, it shall grow steadily in a speedily manner. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Some of us, our marriages were broken. God is giving us the rebuilding anointing. We are going to rebuild what was broken speedily in the name of Jesus. Our sanctuary is going to be built speedily. It may look as though it is delaying, but when God opens up the heavens and starts downloading resources over it, we shall build and not stop. We shall build and not stop until the house of God stands in the name of Jesus. In 2015, when I came here in Uganda, 2015, we built a school in two months, having bought the land, cleared everything that needed to be cleared, built the school. And when school started, we had started with 26 students. They called us Illuminati. They could not fathom how a certain group of people could come and enter a territory, buy the land, clear with documentation, clear with everything. After that, we built in two months. We never even had a good honeymoon. I owe you one. Speedy building. And in the next year, 2016, February, the school had started. 26 children. By the hand of God. So I know what I'm talking about. Praise the Lord. And Papa knows what I'm talking about. Because his house was built speedily. Why? Because he will hasten it in his time. In his time. It was the acceptable time. So things had to work speedily. Why? Heavens had declared that Papa had to enter his house in this year so everything was speedily. The ones who are bringing money, hey, speedily, don't sit on the money, it's not yours. Speedily, speedy reaction. Coach Alex tells us, hey, quick reaction. When you are slowing down, he tells you, hey, quick reaction. Praise the Lord. God commands the angels to move speedily when it is time for him to do what he purposed. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. 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 Let's all stand on our feet. It says, they that wait upon the Lord, that is what we are closing with, shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. In Deuteronomy chapter Let me see if I have it here. In Deuteronomy, somebody asked me, are we going to have a lot of scriptures? I said, yes, you're right. <laughs> In Deuteronomy, I think chapter, where is it, where is it? Where it talks about as the ego stirs up the nest. It should be in 32. As the ego stirs up the nest. Deuteronomy, I think chapter 32. I had put it in my... Okay, Deuteronomy chapter 32. As the ego stirs up its nest. 32, 32 verse 11. Let's read it. I show you. Deuteronomy chapter 32 verse 11. As an ego stirreth up her nest, fluttereth over her young, spreadeth abroad her wings, taketh them, beareth them on her wings, so the Lord alone did lead him, and there was no strange God with him. When they are saying the ego stirs up its nest, by then the nest is comfortable. It is cozy. The ego knows it's time to fly for the children. So it begins to stir up the nest. What does it do? It begins to remove these feathers which the children have been sitting on, and then on the nest... Thorns remain. 
There is no way the eaglets can sit on, thro on thorns. Praise the Lord. And that is what God is doing to some of us. God is stirring up his nest. It is time to arise. It's not time to be comfortable. It's not time to be cozy. That's why God is engaging us in repentance. It is time to leave what we are doing. If you are engaging in sin, if you are comfortable in sin, this is the time the nest is being stirred. Young man, old man, whoever you are, you need to arise. Get up from your comfort zone. It is time to fly with the wings of eagles. Those who wait on the Lord shall mount up with wings. If you cannot run, the highest level after running is flying. You are going to fly. But God has to renew your strength. And the secret is in waiting. In waiting. In waiting. In waiting. It is not magic. It's not for free. You have to wait upon the Lord until he renews your strength. Then you will begin running at a supersonic speed. They waited. They tarried in the upper room. They waited. They waited. And when the power of the Holy Ghost came, they ran at a supersonic speed. Nobody could stop them. At one point, they said, hey, keep quiet. Don't preach in this name. Peter, who was timid because of boldness and the speed of the Holy Ghost upon his life, he said, hey, we cannot but preach in this name. When speed comes, boldness comes. You don't get somebody doing speed and is fearful. They were ready to die. And because of that, the church grew in their numbers. The church grew in their numbers. Let's lift our hands. Ask God for grace to wait. Grace to wait. Pray, pray. I can't hear you. I can't hear you. Ask God for grace to wait. Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we pray for the grace to wait on you. We pray for the grace to wait on you. We pray for the grace to wait on you. We pray for the grace to tarry in your presence. To wait for your hand. Because the hand of God is the hand of speed. Lord, we pray for the grace. Give us the grace to wait in the place of prayer. Give us the grace to wait on you, O God. Give us the grace to wait on you, O God. Lord, start our nest, star our nest, star our nest. May we arise, may we arise, may we arise from our comfort zones, may we arise from slumber, may we arise from slumber, may we arise, may we arise from slackness in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus. Give us the grace, oh God, give us the grace, oh God. Without you, we can do nothing. Lord, we need your grace. 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 For the Bible says, it is the spirit that quickeneth. The flesh profiteth nothing. Lord, quicken us by your spirit. Quicken us. Let there be a stirring in our inner man. Let there be a stirring in our inner man. Let there be a hunger, a desperation, oh God, for you, oh God, for you, oh God. God, for you, O oh God, for you, O oh God, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, hallelujah. Let us welcome Papa Kasozi to close for us. Hallelujah. Everyone, how many people are under 35 here? Just walk to the front. Let's do one more thing before we go out of this room. Everyone under 35. Now, did, the, did you the media record that message? Did you record the message? 
I'm going to go home and listen over this over and over again. Now, I, as leaders in the church, I watch. I, I, I don't close my eyes. I watch. I open my eyes. And I look around as things go on in church. And I'm looking for certain qualities. Let me read you. Today is reading scripture. Let me read you a scripture that um, I believe that befits this message here. Daniel chapter 1, verse 3. The Bible says, Then the king instructed Ashpenazer, the master of the eunuchs, to bring some of the children of Israel and some of the king's descendants and some of the nobles. Verse 4. Young men in whom there was no blemish, but good looking, gifted in all wisdom, possessing knowledge, and quick to understand. I will stop right there. And quick to understand. Put your hands over your head. I've been challenging all of you to read your Bibles because the Lord spoke to me and and today, as Pastor Colin was bringing the word, I started putting my two, one and two together. And now I know why the Lord requires us to read our Bibles 2022. There will be no time to read in 2023. But your biggest problem is right in your head. And I'm not afraid or ashamed to tell you that you people are too slow to respond to the time. You are too slow. I've been asking many of you, how many of you are reading your Bibles in three months? And all of you, many, all, many of you that are telling me, are under 35, you are telling me that you are going to take a whole year. You do not have the time. Quick to understand. That's what speed means. All of you from this day forth, pray that the Lord will give you, give you ability, quick to understand. Pray for your brain. If you need a transplant, pray that the Lord will give you a new understanding. Because many of you are too stubborn, too slow to understand, to, to, to respond to the call of God on your generation. Quick to understand. Pray that the Lord, if you need a, a, a brain transplant, that the Lord will give you a new understanding. Pray for yourself. I'm not going to pray for you. Pray that the Lord will give you a new insights, new ideas. A quick brain is something that responds quickly. Pray. I don't hear you. Pray that the Lord will give you wisdom. Pray that the Lord will give you quickness in your mind. Pray that the Lord will give you, those of you that were told that your brain is too slow, you cannot read quickly, you cannot respond quickly, it is time for speed, for the speed of the Lord is coming upon you in power and it shall cause you to go to do things speedily. You are going to need the knowledge of the word of the Lord. You are going to need the word of the Lord in your mind. You are going to need the word because the word is going to set you on a high speed. It's going to bring you to speed as the Lord is going to cause you to run faster than your enemies. Pray. All of you that are back there, pray for these young people. This is the generation of Jacob. This is the generation of Moses. You are a generation of Daniel. You are a generation of Elijah. You are the generation of Joseph. You are the generation of those that the Lord is lifting up from the pits of hell and is putting you in palaces because of wisdom, because of understanding. Pray that the Lord give you brains that respond quickly. Lord, I pray for these young people. I pray for this generation, oh God, that out of them you take lessness. Take away lessness in Jesus' name. Take away every unfocused mind in Jesus' name. Give them ability to be attentive. Give them ability to pay attention. Give them the spirit of focus. 
Focus, young people. Focus to the things of God. Fix your eyes on your Savior. Lord, I pray in Jesus' name for those that have been scattered all over their mind. They don't know what to focus on, but their mind is foc- foc- divided all over the place. I pray for focus. I pray for speed of understanding. I pray for wisdom to fall on this church. On these young people, oh God. Wisdom to create. Innovative ideas. Ideas of creativity, oh God. Understanding beyond education. Understanding beyond human knowledge. I pray for quickness in your mind. I pray for the wisdom that was upon Solomon to come upon this generation. These people standing right here. Lord, anoint them with an anointing of wisdom. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. So let's agree here. Now, when the word came, speed is the word, right? So by April, all of you, all of you, I don't know what you need to do, all of you, look at me, all of you, by April, be done through the Bible. I was talking to one younger lady and she was saying, oh, I have these things, I have, you know, you know, when God is doing something, you have to be at his speed. So, my friend, Pastor Card, told me that he reads his Bible three times a year, and he's a busy man, but he reads through his Bible three times a year. We are only asking you that you read your Bible from January by the end of April, you should be done. I should never, I'm 50 years old, I should never beat any one of you. And I'm telling you, if you do not, because this is the test the Lord is giving you. Last year, um, July, I think it was September, when I, uh, during the lockdown, I'm, I'm fasting, I'm praying, and the Lord woke me in the night and told me four things. I remembered it too. But one of the things that I remember the Lord told me, tell the church to read their Bibles. Now, I've been wondering, why would we read through our Bibles? Now I know that the time is coming when none of you have the time to read your Bibles. But you're going to need the Bible up here and down here. You're going to need the Bible up here and down here. You won't have the time to tell people that let's look for this scripture. You need to have it on the top of your head, of your, of your head. And that's what the Lord requires of you. These things are very practical. How did Daniel overcome? How did he end up in the palace? He had the qualities quick to understand was one of them. Like he's given an instruction and no more question asked. But some of you, we say fasting and none of, many of you have not responded. Reading your Bible, and many of you have not started. Yet the word of the Lord has come for your generation. I know most of the, leader, most of the people standing back here over our 40s, we know what the, the Lord requires of us in this time. I know I, the Lord has given me a map of my future. I know where I end. I know every detail of things that I'm supposed to do. But you, you need the speed of the Lord. You need the word of God. You know why? Because I don't think in the next three years, all of you are going to be able to stand in the same room like you are standing now. The Lord is going to scatter you all over the world for his kingdom purposes. So we, we, we don't want you to go to Netherlands, Belgium, South Africa, Spain, Canada, and be clueless of what God is, has taken you there for. You need to be grounded in the word of God. And so this is very practical, and we are going to push this if you are going to be part of this congregation. If you are going to, if you're a son and a daughter in this house, you're going to have to respond to the leadership. We are asking you, we are asking you, read your Bible. 
We are fasting for today. Those of you that have not responded, please do. If you don't have a Bible, you, 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 you should have never come to stand here. If you've been in the church for the last six months or anything beyond that, and you don't have a Bible, you are so unserious, you don't even deserve to be under 35. How many people say, God bless Pastor Colin? Amen. Isn't this house blessed? And I'm telling you people, Colin represents your generation. There are many other fiery, prophetic, apostolic people right, start looking at, at me right now. You are going to be able to preach and more than he, he has done. Amen. Because the anointing is on this house. The Lord is going to use you. The Lord is going to use you. And so, Colin is just one out of the park. And I'm telling you, Colin, that was so powerful. So, um, and you talked about pictures. I saw you in the suit, and I said, I'm going to buy you one. Okay. Shady. Where is, where is Serena? Serena. So you bring his suit when? Anytime? No, that's not speed. <laughs> give me speed. Tomorrow. You, you come for the money, I'll give you the money. You measure his chest and his and everything. So, so next time we are going to have Pastor Colin preach in a suit. May the Lord confirm the words of today through his servant with signs and wonders in your house, in this house, in your place of work. May the Lord quicken everything that has over delayed in your life. Those of you that have waited for too long to go back to school, may the end, the end of, of January be the beginning of a new era for you. Lord, we thank you that you are Kawempe Worship Center you have given us a new beginning, and this new beginning is speedily. It is furious, speedily, and it's coming quickly. Our future is not far from us, but our future is now. I declare that even this service, as we end this service, Lord, I pray in Jesus' name that this next week will be a week of speed. Speed in everything your people touches. Speed in everything your people do. Speed in their finances. Speed in their relationships. Speed in everything they do, O oh God. Release speed and we release them, Father, to the speed of the kingdom. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. And everyone say amen.